What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. Um, great guest today, returning guest, uh, kind of by popular demand. Had a lot of people reach out, want me to get him back on the show if he if he if he would, and we did. We have a lot to talk about. We're gonna get to that on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. I'm your host, Ryan Herring. So grateful for everybody taking the time to tune in. Um, really, really, truly do appreciate y'all. Today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And let's just get into it. I've teased it on the beginning. We had Scary Alvarez on once before. We're bringing him back on. Very lucky. Um, if you don't know Scary Alvarez, uh, really influential, intelligent Twitter follower. Shame on you. And uh, I have to warn you, uh, the pay for returning guests isn't any higher than the pay for initial guests. Well, that's good because I don't need money. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't know what, what the, how many, how many wine islands uh, you own, Ryan. I, the over under, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's uh, 0.5. But uh, I recently was able to save up a little money. And it's a good investment if you have the money. But I purchased a new one in the Caribbean. Uh, mm-hmm. Come near Antigua, and uh, you know it's fine. It's, I'm not trying. I'm not selling timeshares or anything, but we can we can talk about this later, and I can I can try and see if anyone wants to invest. I would love it. Um, we had you on the show after the news, Paul oh. Chris getting let go, and we talked about it at that point. This is the craziest season we've seen in a long time. How surprised you were, and now here we are. I want to kick it to you and just where are you at big picture with everything that's happened. Yeah, I mean, here's where I do the false modesty thing and pretend I didn't know everything that was going to happen this way. But, you know, when you and I spoke uh, back in October, you know, Jimmy was was just taken over and there was there was a lot of optimism on my part then. I think it was well founded, frankly. And, uh, you know, there there were some ups and downs. But even as recently as the day before uh, the coaching change was was announced, I was still and you can go back and check Twitter on this in the Jim Leonard camp. I, I expected not not just because I expected him to be hired, which I did, but that was the, the the prevailing wisdom at that point within the program. And you know, to Mac's credit, or I'm not sure if it's credit, but you know, Mac had a different a different thought on this, and he was very stealth about it. He conducts himself differently than I. I, I was not to say I can't command the back room, but I, I, you know, the bravado associated with stuff. I, I was I was upfront about my stuff. And, and and Mac is a little more clandestine and, and clandestine and and uh, he had his, his his eye on Fickle and he went and did his thing and I was I was as shocked as I could possibly be uh, about what happened not shocked in a bad way but surprised at the direction we went I think if you got the honest answer from ninety nine point nine percent of Wisconsin fans they would have had the same the same feeling this came out of nowhere when when Thamel, uh announced that early on uh, Sunday morning. It was just, it was, it was a bolt from the blue. And so, you know, we'll get into this, but I, you know, we, we can, we can do a back and forth, but fickle fickle is a damn good coach. He's a good dude. He's a stable guy. His philosophies on coaching will not exactly a hundred percent align with the, the recent Wisconsin coaching is, is about as close as you're going to find. Uh, and I am very optimistic about, the future of this program with Luke Fickle. And we can go into this in great detail, but I want to kind of give the high level stuff. Yes. Shocked. Yes. Surprised. The, the, the feelings of, of, I don't feel sorry for Jim Leonard. That's not the right word for it. And Jim mm-hmm. would be the last person in the world who'd want you to feel sorry for him. Jim is, Jim knows he's a lucky guy, a talented guy, a successful guy. He's going to land out his feet, whether it's Wisconsin's D line, whether it's someone else's, whether it's on the sidelines as a head coach, but you know, just to, just to start the discussion, I think Jim Leonard would have succeeded at Wisconsin. It may have taken Jim Leonard a year or two, given the direction and the trajectory of the program the last couple of years, to get it to where we're used to having it. I think he would have gotten it there. I don't think twenty. I don't think twenty twenty three necessarily would have been a highly successful season, but he would have been learning on the job, and I think he would have ran with it, and he would have ended up one of the great coaches in Wisconsin history, as as, as you know. The race for second best coach in Wisconsin history is an ongoing thing. And Chris had his crack at it. Fickle is going to get his crack at it. Leonard, it doesn't appear that he's going to get his crack at it, but he's going to, he's going to make some college football team or college football teams not named Wisconsin very happy someday. But if we can retain him, I'm not sure if some news has broken in the last 20 minutes. 
it would be an incredible coup for us to, to keep him on the on the defensive side of the ball. We'll see what happens. Yeah, nothing nothing has broken in the last twenty minutes regarding Jim Leonard. I so, but I do kind of want to go there. So I feel like people have been mixed on this with Jim Leonard potentially coming back. Everybody that is all real Badger fans love Jim Leonard. Does it feel like that's a scenario that would be um, conducive to success with a locker room that was kind of divided and a lot of defensive minds? Um, where are you at on that? Yeah, let's put it this way. It is undoubtedly a risk reward situation, right? There is no there is no intelligent head football coach at CEO, because that's pretty much what Fickle would be, uh, who who would not appreciate the fact that the locker room is a little turn, turned up at what I, I think. I think Fickle is going to win everyone over. I, I no doubt about that. But in the moment, it's raw. And I, I'm not suggesting he and Leonard are rivals, but there is that danger. I don't think I'm saying anything that's a secret that there, there could be that issue. Um, Leonard, of all the people, though, that, that we know who could potentially not make it an issue, Jim would be one of those guys. He loves football. He loves Wisconsin. He loves uh, the idea of Wisconsin being successful, and he loves the kids. He's going to do that analysis in his mind, and I don't think he would be, if, if, if we're by some, this is a miracle, but if we're fortunate enough to retain him, his job from day one is to support Luke Fickle and make this team a winner. That's all he would do. There would never be a, a, a margins thing. It would never be a camps thing. So, mm-hmm. you know, a normal coach under normal circumstances, I think that coach would already be gone. So the fact that Jim Leonard is still in the conversation at some level speaks highly about, A, what Fickle thinks about Leonard, and B, how well Leonard is regarded generally as far as his ability to, to be a, uh, a winner and someone who's not about himself. How much pressure – so you mentioned – and I agree with you, by the way. I think Jim Leonard is going to be an incredible head coach somewhere if he chooses to go that route. Maybe he goes to the NFL as a defensive coordinator. We don't really know. Um, Packers, Packers. <laughs> sure. Listen, that certainly is a lot of fans as well. Um, and uh, people listen to the show, but let's say your your point, I think, is correct. If he had stayed, I think he had a vision. But just gut feeling here, how much of his vision would have been reworking this culture? Because people have talked about that too. Was is he status quo a little upgraded, or was he really going to make drastic changes here? Do you think? I, I again, this is this is a gut feeling for someone whose gut feeling is worth more than other people's uh, mine. Um, I think he would have wanted to put his mark on it. I think Jim is intelligent enough to recognize that there were some some real issues with the foundation of that of this program. So I think he would have tried to fashion the most Wisconsin like program using the Wisconsin way he could. But I think that he he certainly I don't think it's, I'm saying anything as a secret. There were going to be changes. I, I don't know how much the culture was going to change because the culture is part of what attracted him here. But as far as the coaching staff and things like that, I, I think that he knew that was going to have to change uh, a little more innovative offense and things like that. I mean, I, I don't think that's, that's telling a secret, but you know, if, if the, if the problem, I'm not saying it is or isn't a problem, but part of the, the issue, it, we got a little, so fat and happy, I guess, is what I've heard some people describe it as in the Wisconsin way. And I understand it was a, an, an odd situation and a very sad situation with Gary Brown that led to an offensive lineman being a running backs coach. There isn't another major program in the country that's going to let that happen. I, I just I know what to tell you. That was, you know, he's a, Johnson's a good dude and I was happy for him. But things like that is, are exactly the things that fueled why, you know, people were concerned that things had gotten stagnant. Leonard, I think, appreciates that those things could not happen again. But in terms of changing a culture or, or altering a culture to try and be competitive in the playoff landscape, the expanded playoff landscape especially, which I think was very attractive to Fickle, um, I think Fickle certainly brings a more sure, more immediate culture change. It's, it remains to be seen whether that's going to be more or less successful. I, I, I happen to think he's going to be successful I like, and we can get into my, my full thoughts on Fickle, but I, I, I like a lot of what he brings. I think he's a good guy. But it's, I said this, the first tweet I, after I found out about this was, it's the end of Wisconsin football as we know it. And that's not apocalyptic, but it is not the same good old boy, whether you like it or not, pat in the back, every Badger can come back to their space for him. That's, that's gone now. That's over. Um, but I do think the fact that Fickle's talking to coaches still indicates that there's room for keeping that Wisconsin way at some level there. 
So I, I, I guess to, to summarize it, if you're looking for a short-term coach who has proven himself on the biggest stage, I don't think there's any question Luke Fickle provides that guy right now, whereas Leonard would have been a little bit of a shot in the dark on it. But I think Leonard would have been successful. That's really well said, and I agree with so much of that. Um, I have a bunch more questions coming up. I actually wanted to ask you about that that particular quote because I, I wrote it down, the end of Wisconsin as we know it. I want to ask you about that next. Uh, first, we have to take a very quick break. A bunch more to talk about with Scary Alvarez. So grateful for him jumping on the show. We're always smarter because of it. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs and information. Uh, the number one spot for the live futures betting, in game betting. Y'all know I'm a Niners fan. I say it all the time. I have money on them winning the Super Bowl. I bet with my head, not my heart. Or I bet with my heart, not my head. It is what it is. Um, same with the Phoenix Suns. I got them in the finals. Although that one might be a little more realistic. We'll see. Uh, but either way, Bet Online is the number one source for this. All your. Uh, top lines, trend lines, um, sports podcast plus live casino games, roulette, blackjack. A lot of a lot of things you can do on this website. It's a lot of fun. Um, grab your webs or grab your mobile device. Head to the website. Learn more about the trends in action. That online where the game starts. And we're going to get right into this interview again. Bring Scary Albers back on. Uh, I wanted hey, to. By, by the way, I like to, I like yeah. to interrupt and interject things that you have no preparation for. So you're a Phoenix Suns fan. I, you know, I, I didn't get online a lot. I saw Chris Paul trending a lot last night on Twitter. And I figured he must have had a really good game or something. Are the, are the Suns looking good? It was Paul. Is he is he doing well in basketball? What's going on there? No, he's, he Paul is one of those dudes trending for the wrong reason right now. Um, oh, really? Did he have a turnover? Did no, he have a turnover? Well, you could call it a turnover. Was it's, it an assist? Was it an assist? Did he did he assist did he, someone with something? You could call you could call it a lot of things, really. Um, okay. So, yeah, Chris Paul is not even playing basketball in his trend. It's, listen, it's never a good sign when you're trending oh. for something you're not famous for, right? Like yeah. All- yeah. <laughs> so, if anybody wants to look it up, that is out there. Chris Paul is sadly not trending because he is a leading the Suns to a Western Conference League record, which they are, by the way, because of Devin Booker. But absolutely, uh, uh, Devin Booker, who who, uh, who uh, I'll always keep. Full close to my heart is one of the, the losing players in the Kentucky Wildcats basketball game when Wisconsin beat them in 2015. Yes, he is. He played a big role in that win. Mm-hmm. Came off the bench in that game. Uh, we should do a show on that on that game at some point. Maybe in the summer when things calm down. Happy to. All right. Let anyway. You were just you were just saying. I, I I love to interrupt you, but please continue. No, it's great. I love it, man. Um, I want to go back to your quote there because it hit me like, honestly, I think I even sent you a message when you tweeted it. Um, This is the end of Wisconsin football as we know it. And like you said, that's not like an apocalyptic Wisconsin's not going to be a good thing. But are the era is the era of of walk ons coming to Wisconsin and of fullbacks? And I like those things like I'm nostalgic for those things while wanting change. I don't even really know how to square that in my head, but I think that's kind of where you're going with that. Correct. It is a little bit, although I will say this. As far as going after a coach who is considered to be, you know, one of the one of the best going right now, and has embraced aspects of modern things that Wisconsin fairly or unfairly has not. I'm not sure what your opinion on that is. Fickle's a Fickle is about as close a big time coach to our system as you're going to find. So you know, I I I, I don't want to say I was being over dramatic with that statement. What I just meant was, and I explained it a little bit earlier. That pat in the back, badger way that's kind of happened, and Gary Anderson broke it a little bit, but we we then broke him. Um, that's over, but I, I do think we're going to see some continuity. It would not shock me a bit if Luke Fickle found diamonds in the rough walk on offensive lineman at Wisconsin who ended up playing. But I do believe unquestionably that starting with the recruiting department, which is already being, they already have the the, the crew in starting to rework this. Recruiting is going to be a completely different animal. And I know they tr- we tried at the end here with Chris. I, I understand they, they tried to read, but that was that was make up for lost time. And that was never going to get back up to speed immediately. It's going to be – that recruiting department is going to be different. And the NIL stuff, I, without getting into specifics, they understand it has to be different. So, you know, in terms of those two gigantic aspects of modern college football being a much more important part than they used to be for Wisconsin, it is going to be the end of Wisconsin as we know it. It's going to be different. Yeah, and I, I know we've talked about this before as well. I did a show after Paul Chris left, just thanking him for everything he did. Um, and, and I'll probably I'll have to do the same one for Jim Leonard. I would want to if he if he ends up leaving. But so much of people play fans focus on the coaches leaving, and this is the profession they chose and the money. But there's real families involved in this too. Right. There's there's kids who are in high schools. There's 
wives who have moved to Madison with their their, their husbands. There's a lot impacted here. It's yes. tough to walk that line with new coaches coming in that you're excited for, but also like there's a, there is a human element here and there's empathy required. And I, I think we miss that sometimes. Well, I think that's true. And, and again, I mean, for anyone who follows my account, you know, look, I love the memes, man. I love the crazy memes the kids are doing these days and all that stuff and the distracted boyfriend and whatever. But I, I, I hope that it's not been lost in my many, my many tweets, all of which are amazing, um, that we do need to remember the families. Not, I'm not talking about just the recruits. I mean, that's in my, my, my position on recruits, by the way, as you probably know, is if they if they want to decommit and go somewhere else, that's totally understood. It's their life, man. They, the guy that recruited them in is not going to be that guy anymore so how can you you know by the same way we're like oh hey welcome luke fickle welcome well there's a bunch of recruits he had that had the same thing happen. So i feel that a little bit hypocritical there if you're so excited about one guy coming in and then be like oh no loyalty to wisconsin for the recruits or and, and frankly even the players that are still there if, it, if there's a if there's a player and some of them have been in the portal i have no ill will whatsoever towards anyone who wants to transfer this is their life, and they put the blood, sweat, and tears in. They're the ones who run the hills. They're the ones sweating to death, at, at, you know, at, at, in, in preseason preseason camp. So, while I'd like to retain everyone that we had, and we welcome them with open arms, I get it. So, I, you know, I, I just think it's it's a very we, fans need to remember these are people, and whether it's someone trashing grammar, I went, I do this, and I think it's sort of like. I do this to get my own blood pressure up, which my blood pressure last time I took it was, was 40 over 18. So that's a very, I've been told that's low and my heart rate's four, but some people get upset about things like this, but I see these, these people who have, who peaked as a JV eighth grade quarterback in, in Milanago or something talking, fuck Mertz, or, oh, I swore, sorry, screw Mertz or whatever, things like that. This is a human being and you're not going to find many people who worked, has worked hard. I'm just using Graham as an example because it is the the, the the best example of someone who has given everything he has to the school. There's no one who who is as who is more dissatisfied with not being a little better than Graham is. But there's not you're not going to find a nicer, more hardworking kid. And people are just trashing him. And, his, and his, he has a mother going to these games who sees this and sees the kid getting hurt. And people are like, shoot him like a horse. I'm so glad he got hurt. Let's see what Chase Wolf can do. It's disgusting. It is, and we, we touched on this a little bit in the last one. I'm not trying to pontificate, but as as a grandparent of one, apparently two former Badgers, Joe, whatever. Um, I, I have a lot of sympathy and empathy for these parents and these families and God bless them. I just hope they find the right fit for their kids, but fans need to remember this is, is you can be happy about Luke Fickle getting this job and still want the best for Graham Mertz. You can be happy about, uh, you know, recruiting being, being trending upward and still understand where Braylon Allen is coming from. Wouldn't get his future stuff. You don't have to, you, you know, I just feel like we, we get so myopic on this about what's the best thing for Wisconsin Badgers and forget that these are, these are human beings that make the program up. Yeah. I think that's really well said and it needs to be said occasionally. And again, you're not, you're not telling anybody how to react as far as fans, but you can, you can be critical of coaching decisions or programs without being critical of the person or the, the character of that person behind. Those well, decisions. you know, that's, that's another thing about Wisconsin sports. It seems like it's, they're sort of unique in that way. There are coaches around the country who are unsuccessful and are also tremendous dicks. Chris is, I mean, the quality of the people in this program, Jimmy, there's a reason they're here. And, and you know, maybe the success hasn't been what we wanted it to be, but, the character of these guys is not in question. So if for no other reason, support them as human beings and want the best for them. And so when I see vitriol and, and terrible things said by these losers who, who've never done anything in their life, and I'm sorry, I'm just, not everyone can be an elite football player in the world, and it's okay to have different opinions. People being happy with Chris leaving and someone being happy with Fickle being hired, I'm not taking issue with that. That is what you're right as a fan. But the personal stuff is what gets me. It's just disgusting. And, I, and, and, and uh, you know, it, it's... It's not as bad in Wisconsin as it is in some places, but that doesn't matter. These are still human beings who I, I would have turned my social media off if I would have had social media on my BlackBerry. I, I would have turned that off you know, after the first loss. I just I don't because I just don't give a shit. You know, I don't I don't. And hopefully these players, these kids are are doing the right thing and, and insulating themselves at least right now from some of this crap. But you know, I, I see things like like uh, Terrence Burkett putting the time to lead. I thought that was incredible. You know, mm -hmm. he's saying I'm a. It's not a diss on Mertz. It's not a diss on Chase Wolf. 
this is just a kid who's given of himself to this program for the last year and, and, and is signaling that he wants to and even you know and, and and just seeing some of the comments on that even it's just amazing i i, I just I'm not shocked by it, but I just want I want fans to be better. And let's and let's give Fickle a chance. Fickle might come in next year and win six games. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what his roster is going to look like. Give these guys a chance. Give the kids a chance and be happy for them wherever they end. Well, let me ask you on that one: is is Fickle coming in next year? Then and again, I appreciate the time. I, I, um, I'm just going to keep you for a few more minutes here. I'm sure you're off to some CEO board meeting somewhere, um, but. Is they, come to, they come. They come to me. Don't worry. They come to you. That's a great search committee quote, by the way. <laughs> is Fickle coming in next year now with crazy expectations, considering that Jim Leonard was kind of left off the table? Like, if he wins seven games next year, are we going to have a large group of alumni fans shouting, "That's why you should have kept Jim"? Yes. I mean, I I don't know any other way to say it. If Fickle does not come in and there's not a difference, if they're not seeing a difference in the way the team plays, the record is important, and I understand that. But if it looks like the same old Wisconsin offense and the line isn't what it used to be again, and you can't, there's not an answer at quarterback and it's inconsistent play, and the defense is, is, is leaky, yes, they're, they're, I'm not saying that the average intelligent fan is going to have a big issue, but I'm saying there's going to be a large number of people who, who are going to have a problem with it. There is tremendous pressure on Luke Fickle. This is not Cincinnati where you can come in before and eight and then and then start start building. There's going to be expectations again, dependent upon how the team looks. I suspect the talent level will be pretty similar to this year. I don't think it's going to fall off completely. There's going to be transfers and it's going to be okay. That part of it's going to be okay because because of the transfer portal. But yeah, the pressure is going to be on this guy and be careful what you wish for. But I I I, I believe that that uh, Fickle is not only himself. Uh, ready for that kind of pressure. He's going to surround himself with really good people, and I think it's going to be okay. And I expect a, a very successful – I expect a nine-plus win season for Wisconsin next year. That's that's my that's my very way too early expectation. Uh, I love it. I, I, that's kind of where I'm at as well. Um, we're going to take one more very quick break and a couple more minutes with uh, Scary Alvarez. Um, bunch to talk about. Great show. I'm ready to talk all, all kinds of stuff, man. What, what are we advertising next? Who's, who's this person I'm going to get a bunch of money to? Um, I, this is just a break I have to insert later. I don't even know who it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, hey, I got a time share I could sell you. You looking for timeshares? So we'll, we'll put that in and then I'll loop back and, and touch base with you and we'll figure get out some, who it is. Get some of that funky info music in there, buddy. Is that Shalimar? What's that? The, the stuff at the beginning. It's good stuff. Did you compose that yourself on your simp? <laughs> I have no idea who that is. Don't be, don't, yeah, you're young. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. Coming right back. Um, for word from our sponsors. All right, thank you so much for staying with us. I love these talks. Um, we got to have Scary Alvarez on more. It's it's really dependent on his schedule because I I sent you a message, man. I have a lot of people that after I did the show with you, they said get him back on, please. I said, well, I'll try, but that dude is slumming it. Come down with me. So you have intelligent, you have intelligent fans. That's good to hear. I have a couple of them for sure. I wanted to ask you um one more quick question, and then I kind of want to talk about hockey. We're gonna shift gears hard here and talk for a few minutes about hockey. I know that was talking from you originally, one of your original passions for Wisconsin. Yes. But I did want to ask this final question with Chris McIntosh. It's been rattling around in my brain. Did he – I've said it before. I, I really like that he didn't take the necessarily the easy route out. Like the easy route would have honestly been te- keeping Paul Christ or sh- shifting, shifting to Jim Leonard. I think he just kept to his convictions, which I, I appreciate. Did he maybe – should he have been more clear to the fan base, the alumni, that this will be a national coaching search? He talked about it, and then it seemed like he just kind of stopped. I, I think in hindsight, he, it would have helped, but I can understand the thought process where he didn't. Because if he starts talking about a national coaching search after Chris is fired, it adds another thick distraction to this already difficult job for Jim Leonard. So I actually have a lot of sympathy for McIntosh, who is a fantastic hire, by the way. You have to go check out who hired him. Um, but Mac, Mac does it a little differently. I mean, you know, the, he's – to the extent that I have a shadow that extends all the way to the mountain mountain time zone, and he is he has stepped out of it in his own way. Whether or not I agree with his moves or not, and I happen to agree with many of them, he's he's forging his own way, and he's going to own this. And if, if if Fickle is a huge success, he is going to get all the credit for it. And if Fickle's a failure, he's going to get all the credit for it. And it's going to be, but it's going to be his to own. But yeah, I think he probably had some regret. I think he heard some of that when he was talking about things he would have done a little differently. He kept it vague enough, though, in my opinion. Uh, that, you, you know, you could throw your own interpretation of what he meant there. 
That's fair. Um, I, like I said, I want to shift gears here. I'm not really a big hockey guy, but I love Wisconsin sports when they do well. I watch them when they're in championships games, finals games. The volleyball team's a great example of that. Hockey has more or less fallen off a cliff at Wisconsin after hiring Tony Granato, a dream hire, but he's under 500 at Wisconsin. What are your thoughts with the Wisconsin hockey program for those wondering where it is and how does it get better? Yeah, I mean, I hear, I hear people saying things like we should have cut hockey and not baseball. I mean, it's it's a it's a bleak period for Wisconsin, which is kind of crazy because they had the number one seed in the tournament two years ago. But Cole Caulfield, that team was pretty incredible. But you know, when Tony was hired, and back remember in 1990 when I when I came on, hockey was king, football was a the redhead stepchild, basketball was okay, NIT caliber, but nothing special. And hockey was was the standard bearer that won a national title the same year I, I, I took the job. Um, and seeing it fall, I mean, you know, they, they had their title and then they, they fell off again. Tony Granato not being a consistent winner is one of the most shocking things that I have seen in my in my tenure with Wisconsin. I can't believe it because Tony not only is a great human being, he's a really good coach who's had success at many levels, including the NHL. A, a fantastic recruiter. Even this year, Wisconsin had the number six class in the country. Okay, coming off one of the worst seasons of any of, of Wisconsin in Wisconsin history. So I am stunned, and I don't know. And he had, he's had a good series of assistants. Not maybe not everyone, but a number of them are, are well regarded. And it's a complete and total mystery to me why this team has not been better. So. It pains me to say this because we're in a results-oriented business. I think I think if I were to read the tea leaves here, I think Tony is is barring a, a very very impressive uh, you know comeback from the Badgers. They're still winless in Big Ten play out and we're in December. Uh, barring a comeback uh, from them this year, and I, I I do believe this will be Tony's last season. I think this will still if, when if and when Tony exits stage left, this is still a top five hockey job, and I think. Despite the last success, it's kind of like, kind of like Nebraska wants to be, in the sense of like it's it's this blue blood program. Except for we've had success recently, whereas Nebraska has success in the you know nineties. But uh, it's another thing, like they're saying Nebraska is a better job than Wisconsin. That is preposterous. And, and but they, we can we can get into this. We're not going to do that like three hundred walk on and do that September because of that. But getting back to to, to hockey. I'm not concerned long term about the program. We have good facilities. The fans will come back when they win. But I, I just, I, I really, really have have grave concerns about Tony's how long Tony's going to be there. And I, I, he's a great dude, and it's one of the best Big Ten eats episodes of all times when Tony's doing a cheese tasting thing. You can just tell what a genuine, hilarious, good dude he is. Uh, that's a very weird reference, but check that one out if you can with Jenny Dell. Not that Troy geek, not that, not that, not that other dude is just get him out of there. Jenny, Jenny takes control. But uh, yeah, I think that's where we are with hockey. Yeah. Is, do you think it's surprising to him as well? I mean, is, it seems like everybody's surprised by his inability to, to really turn this into what it should be. T- Tony would never have accepted a job, whether it's Wisconsin, NHL, some other program that he did not think he was going to be successful at. So Tony is probably more surprised by a wide margin than anyone else is. Because his recruiting has never fallen off, and I, I don't, I just don't know what to say. I don't know if it's the curse of, jo- of joining the Big Ten or what is going on. Because it's just this is a, a the, the wildest sustained general besides two years ago when we were a, a one seed uh, period of, of, of non success that the hockey program has ever had, even even in the late years of his predecessor. So. I don't know. I, I, fingers crossed. Maybe they come back and, and, and start winning some games and they got a lot. They have a good young team right now with a lot of guys with talent. So I just want them to put it together. But if, if I were wagering money on it, I'd say it's probably the end. Uh, he's Gary Alvarez at Barry is the Don. Always, always grateful, man, when you're able to jump on the show and, and just give us that insight. Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy to do it. It's, it's actually quite shocking. I do this all for free. But you know what? I'm a loving God, and I, I want nothing but the best. And, and here's to uh, one more shout-out to all the, all the kids in the Wisconsin uh, program right now. I'm thinking of, of all y'all, and, and I want you to make the decision that's best for you. Hopefully it's embracing the Badgers. Uh, obviously, huge shout-out to, to Coach Fickle and his, his staff that's still forming. And to the extent that any of the existing guys, including Jimmy, can, can stay in there and, and be a part of it, I think that'd be awesome. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in as well. Um, by popular demand, we were able to bring Scary back. Hopefully, we'll do it again in the offseason. We'll do. We'll talk about that Kentucky Wisconsin game as well. 
But um, on Wisconsin, we're going to keep talking tomorrow. Marquette coming up. That's a big one. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you later. Yeah, be at those punks from Milwaukee. Whew.